Today let's talk about some common soldering mistakes. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Here's a joint that's not clean, and let's try soldering it and see what happens. I got this mega watt soldering iron. It's like 13, 1400 watt soldering iron. We'll wet the tip, get things started. Mm. You can see that it doesn't really want to stick. Nothing's happening. In fact, you can see the solder about ready to fall out of there. Yes. Okay. If I apply enough flux, I might get the flux to actually hold it together. That is a that is something that happens. You get the flux holding it together, and then you pick up the joint that pops apart. Yeah, I'm getting very little adhesion here. So just a dirty joint. Uh, you waste a lot of solder, you waste a lot of time, and yeah, just this is not a good joint at all. You can see the see the bad coloring over here. That's an indication of a cold joint. So a dirty joint, waste your time, waste solder, and just just not a good idea. The best thing that can happen is you get a crummy looking joint, and the worst thing is you get a, a connection that's no electrical connectivity at all. Let's take a look at this joint up close. My guess is it's pretty weak. Yeah, there it goes. Just a little twist and it's popped. See that? There was very little, very little uh, connection of the solder to the workpiece. So, oh, also before I forget, this is another reason you want to have a good mechanical connection in case the solder fails. At least the wires will be held apart. They won't go springing apart and short somewhere. Uh, yeah, so a good mechanical connection uh, is not a substitute for good soldering, but on the other hand, it's a good safety thing when the solder does part. Okay, yeah, again, a uh, dirty workpiece, bad idea. Nothing good's going to come out of it. Here's a dirty tip. And watch what happens when I try to apply solder to it. See the tip right there is black, kind of grayish. See that? Solder doesn't want to stick to it. Solder runs away from it. If I do it back here where it's relatively clean, you see the solder will wet it right away. But up here on the tip, where it's dirty and it ain't going to happen. So, a dirty tip is another serious issue. You can mess up a good soldering joint by getting into the plastic over here. You see the smoke pouring off of it? And what happens is, see how ugly my tip looks now? See the nice carbon on there? That spot will not hold solder, and if I drag it back through the joint, it will contaminate the rest of my joint, uh, making it an ugly joint too. So, if you get into the, into the plastic, into the insulation, you touch something you're not supposed to with a soldering iron, clean a tip off before you continue, just immediately. Don't drag it back into your work. Stop, go clean it. Let's see what happens when we try to go too fast. Which is the same as operating too cold. We'll do this. Try to run along here. See it? It doesn't want to stick. So, being impatient. Uh, if you try to go too fast, it just doesn't stick. See that? Now if I do it right, and I get in here, wet my tip, Get the heat flow going, and then I move along here at a good rate. I got to get both sides of the work going. This is not a lovely joint. But if I take my time and get the solder to flow. Heat both sides of the work, and continue down here. And using too much solder. And there we go. So for you know just a plain old joint like that. I wouldn't recommend doing this joint. I just wanted to show you for purposes of illustration. But 
If you move along slowly enough, apply enough heat, you can make even a, a really bad joint like this, uh, you can get it to solder. So again, your technique, how fast you move, is also important. This soldering iron is never going to produce enough heat to solder this piece of copper. The wire is just too big, the tip uh, on the soldering iron is too small, and the total heat production of the soldering iron is just too small. Let's give it a try anyway. So, wet the tip, get it in contact with the copper, get my hand steady. You say, oh wait, it's already it's already starting to solder. But you see that? No, it's not. I'm getting I'm getting solder to stick on this outer surface of the wire. But and I can solder like one little piece of wire at a time, but I'm not gonna be able to heat soak the joint, and I'm not gonna be able to get the solder to go all the way down in there. You can see how it's the solder's not nice and shiny. So you can say, oh yeah, it's working, but no, it's not. See that that look of like it has a skin on the solder? That's not good. And how it forms these little pointy things. It's just it's just not hot enough. Just for fun, let's finish this up. See how nice and shiny that looks? It doesn't develop that skin, and if I move the soldering iron away, I don't get those points. Hold too much solder, and I got back into the insulation. So there's a there's a joint that uh, is completely heat soaked and completely joined with solder. I've got this. I think it's a 10 millimeter wire, and I've got it sitting on top of a 6 millimeter iron plate. And can I can I solder this copper, nice shiny clean copper, to this sanded off, nice and clean spot on this 6 millimeter iron plate? And I don't think it's going to happen. I could probably sit here all day long holding this 13 or 1400 watt soldering iron on here and I just don't have the heat there's just not enough heat coming out of this soldering iron to heat both the copper and the iron plate up to the temperature of melting solder and it's just not going to happen the heat's moving away too fast to for the workpiece to heat up it's reaching a high temperature but yeah not high enough so not enough heat is is an issue. Uh, this soldering iron is never going to produce enough heat to melt this lead into this workpiece, this copper workpiece, and the iron workpiece below. So not enough heat, common error. So theoretically, would it be possible to solder this copper onto this iron? And the answer is yes. Uh, iron prefers an acid. Uh, flux and acid flux is not good for copper. It will work, but the copper would probably corrode relatively quickly. Not a good thing. Soldering iron to iron, you'd use the acid flux and it does work. Uh, I've used it on gutters and that works fine. So here's what we were trying to use. And this, in comparison, is what I use for gutters. Let me show you, let me show you the whole thing. So now you can see the, the difference. This thing is gets frighteningly hot, and this you can see the difference in tip size. Okay, that's just for amusement. Another thing you can do is overheat the tip, overheat the soldering iron. Let me show you what happens. Here's a nice, clean, shiny bit of solder, and we'll just let this run. You can see what happens. First of all, I'm burning away all the flux uh, for the tip of the soldering iron. That's not too bad, but. You start to see what's happening. It's no longer shiny. 
Yeah, it's getting kind of crusty looking right there. And the, yeah, now you can see the change in color. The, the solder, the tin, and the lead are oxidizing. And this is not good. It uh, will cause clumpy and cold joints. So, yeah, you can, it's possible to overheat a, a soldering iron. And it, I need to go back now and retin this because I've messed up the tinning on it. Here's something I would take a small wager that it's not going to solder. And the issue is not clean, the issue is not the temperature, it's not anything. The issue is that I'm trying to solder aluminum and I don't have the right kind of solder. So, material has to match the solder, solder has to match the material. And as you can see, nothing, nothing is happening. I'm overheating the thing and it's just not going to happen. So you got to have the right solder for the right type of stuff. And again, ordinary solder won't solder aluminum. This is another thing that I probably won't solder. And no, it's not aluminum again. Not trying to trick you. See, it's just not going to stick. You can see the crusty stuff. Yeah, actually, I'm overheating it. But uh, most types of stainless, yeah, overheated the tip. See the chunk come off there. Uh, most types of stainless are not going to solder. So, yeah, again, the solder has to match the workpiece and. Yeah, regular solder is not going to solder stainless, most types of stainless.